Okay, I propose we start our meeting, and first of all, I would like to welcome you, our dear um, friends uh, of the European Economic Area. I would like to welcome you, um, Catherine, uh, Daniel, uh, Jonas. Thank you for being here. We are very happy to have you with us today. Your three countries are EU close friends and allies, and this year marks an important anniversary the 30th anniversary of our common European Economic Area Agreement. The EEA is unique in its scope and its depth. It has withstood the test of time and proved itself as relevant today as when it was first signed. The EEA brings 30 countries together in the world's largest internal market. And this internal market is one of Europe's greatest assets offering extensive opportunities for economic, social and border advancement. Our trade and investment volumes have grown immensely. Trade within the internal market today accounts for 56 million jobs. Our close cooperation deepens our shared understanding and vision. The EEA is also a vehicle for increasing our common resilience and competitiveness. It enables us to work together on the most pressing challenges Europeans face, 
the ones we discussed in this room yesterday, such as increasing and intensifying our support to Ukraine or strengthening our defense industrial base. We will continue to take good care of this 30-year partnership using all the unique possibilities it opens to address new global challenges together. And once again, thank you for being here and thank you for your the good cooperation. I would like to pass the floor to the Prime Minister of Iceland. Please, Catherine, you have the floor. Thank you, Charles. Mr. President and dear colleagues, we are very happy to be here with you on this occasion where we uh, celebrate the 30th anniversary of the EEA agreement. Um, actually, we met in this format five years ago. Since then, uh, the world has gone through several crises and is still going through a lot of crises. So multilateral collaboration has been under pressure and therefore I think it's very important to say that we value this privileged partnership very much and we find it important to continue in going forward. The EEA agreement is one of the key pillars of Iceland's foreign policy and together with the Schengen Association it forms the backbone of our relationship with Europe. I think it's fair to say that the agreement is present in the everyday lives of people and is the home market for businesses, accounting for about half of our external trade. The agreement has been a doorway of opportunity and prosperity for people and businesses in Iceland. And we have also seen progress in our environmental and social regulation, which we can thank the EEA agreement. And as a former Minister of Education, Culture and Science back in the days, uh, I cannot but praise the foresight of my predecessors that provided for our full participation in the EU programs through the agreement. Now, EEA cooperation continues to enjoy a strong support in Iceland, but there are at least well, almost two generations of Icelanders, almost half of the nation maybe, with no recollection of life before the EEA. And I think it is a given to have all the opportunities that the agreement has provided for our country. And this is why it is important, uh, because we sometimes tend to th take things for a given in our world. So therefore it is important to celebrate and also to remind us not to be complacent and that we need to uphold knowledge of the agreement. And that is also important therefore to have this meeting with the EU where we actually talk about the importance of this. We need to ensure a well-functioning and resilient internal market which is not fragmented and fit for the future. We should also seek out areas where we can enhance our cooperation through the EA agreement or elsewhere. And for example, we are now very focused on further participation in the EU's health cooperation. So we have a firm basis to jointly tackle future public health threats. And I must also say that the experience during the pandemic uh, was extremely important for Iceland, where we actually uh, relied on having partners here in Europe which really was important to go through that difficult phase. Now, we also welcome the agreement with the Commission on the next period of the EEA financial mechanism and the joint review of the trade regimes between Iceland and the EU. Now, Mr. President, to conclude our shared fundamental values, democracy, rule of law and human rights, including gender equality, are the core of our cooperation, elements which we jointly need to defend and safeguard. We will continue to engage in collective efforts for the green transition, where we must continue to be ambitious. And last but not least, the war of aggression against Ukraine, the terrible situation in Gaza, the unprecedented environmental challenges, the pandemic and the number of geopolitical developments in a multipolar world really require us to stand united, not only now, but for the times to come. So thank you all for this occasion to have a dialogue. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Now I would like to pass the floor to um, the Prime Minister of Liechtenstein, please. Thank you, dear President Michel, dear European friends. I thank you for this invitation to what I consider uh, EEA summit. After 30 years still, the European economic area is highly appreciated back home in Liechtenstein and enjoys very wide support, both in our political institutions and among people. 
This closest form of integration with the European Union, with you, has proven to be a perfect fit for us. There are 30 of us in this room today, and I'd like to emphasize on this 30. We represent 30 European states and 30 years of the European economic area. We 30 are united by values, united by the wish and the obligation for a prosperous and peaceful Europe. Being EA members, we all are members of the single market. It is therefore important that none of the EEA states, none of us is considered as third state, and that the vision, rights and obligation of the EEA agreement are respected, upheld and lived in everyday practice by and for all of us. We find ourselves in challenging circumstances. To overcome these challenges, the European Union has adopted some very commendable legislation, many relating also to the internal market. In this multidimensional work, we strongly ask that the integrity of the internal market will be upheld and a close dialogue is ensured to secure our respective inclusion therein. We in Liechtenstein are proud Europeans as one of the 30 members of the EA and as a member of the Council of Europe where we currently hold the presidency. 30 years of excellent relations with you, the European Union member states, is truly something to be proud of. But the challenges ahead should remind us of the importance of maintaining and enhancing this strong partnership and of standing up and defending our common values together. Thank you. Um, I would like to pass the floor to Prime Minister of Norway. Please, your next the floor. Thank you, Charles, and thank you for inviting us here. Thank you for you taking, making the effort to convene us on this 30th anniversary. I will subscribe to what uh, the Prime Minister of Iceland said on behalf of the uh, EFTA states on the EEA side. For me, it is also you know, a personal jubilee because I was part of the Norwegian delegation negotiating the EEA. And I was going through the records back home in Norway, and I think I'm the only one still standing from that, <laughs> from that period. Uh, and for us, you know, uh, this was a, a really a, a breakthrough thing when the president of the commission in um, the end of 1988 invited EFTA countries to come in to cooperate on the uh, internal market. We were then <coughs> seven EFTA states. Uh, Austria, Sweden, Finland uh, went for NATO, for EU membership, as did Norway. Uh, we did not succeed that referendum. But we have 30 years now of an EA agreement where I think we have done our best to maintain a level playing field, equal rights and obligations, and we have this generation, the Erasmus generation, coming together from the Arctic to the Mediterranean. It matters to people. And Norway has, in addition, we have, in addition, joined the Schengen. Uh, and uh, the uh, EEA has been a kind of a lightning rod to attach new values to it, research, development, and now recently uh, in the defense industry area, just to jump to our days, uh, where we are now participating and contributing to, to common goals. So on your agenda, dear colleagues, which is today a, a testimony to all the drama that is confronting Europe, this little session this morning I think is a benign moment to celebrate a, a peaceful uh, cooperation that has benefited all. But I will just like to share on behalf of Norway that what is now confronting us in terms of attack uh, on a European country, an attack on the uh, integrity of, of our values, we stand firmly with Europe. And, and we are ready to contribute uh, in every respect and to make Europe stronger to confront these challenges. I'd like to thank the President of the Commission. Uh, for her personal involvement of being responsive to uh, EEA uh, uh, member states from the EFTA side. Uh, we have now, from Norway's side, concluded a green alliance with the European Union. We will reach our Paris obligations alongside Europe. Um, and uh, as the Prime Minister of Iceland said, we believe that in the areas such as health, uh, secure connectivity, we are also part of, a, on, of an economic and a human ecosystem where we all need to find uh, ways of uh, cooperating closely. So uh, uh, we see ourselves as EU's closest partner and ally. We share ambitions and share concerns. And when there are obstacles, we have always experienced that there are ways to, to find uh, constructive solutions. I'd like also to thank my Nordic friends 
uh, who are uh, good partners, our Baltic friends, who uh, are uh, regional, geographical, close to us, and, and, and uh, with whom we have uh, close relations. But basically, to all uh, mem EU member states for uh, upholding this important cooperation, and we will do what we can in the next phase of uh, EU enlarging itself. As the Prime Minister of Iceland said, the cohesion funds is a significant contribution to uh, societal development, development in, in uh, man, many EU member states. Uh, and um, uh, also, when we uh, confront uh, big challenges ahead, such as climate security, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, we are uh, clearly committed to be part of that endeavor. So thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Unice. Uh, I would like to say